Hello everybody. Have you seen this video by Everything Electric, Fully Charged, those, that network of people? Imogen shows us a little solar installation and some claims are made and some basically another paid advert. And I appreciate everything that Imogen and the Robert and everything they've done with Fully Charged and Everything Electric. It's a great platform. It raises awareness. It shows us what's possible. But quite obviously, it is an advertising platform for manufacturers and for businesses and for companies. And in this case, the company on the chopping block are Heatable. And once again, I really like a lot of the things that Heatable have done. And I like the way that uh, Ben presents things. He's very enthusiastic. He seems to be really driving things forward. And their website is second to none. Uh, the interface is absolutely excellent. The way that you can build a solar system online in a desktop simulation from your home there is nothing else out there that can compete with their platform it's absolutely incredible what they've managed to achieve but that being said I've got a bone to pick with a few issues but I'm just going to focus on one otherwise we'd be here all day and I want to keep this video kind of short and concise I don't doubt some of the claims made about bifacial panels some of you might be skeptical about them but there are enough uh, real world um, side by side a b tests that you can see that bifacial panels pretty much in all circumstances they are beneficial and they will give you a performance advantage compared to the old, you know, traditional style monofacial panels or whatever you want to call them. Um, but for me, it's about the micro inverters and specifically not necessarily the claims that Enphase make, but the claims that are made by Heatable and then repeated by Everything Electric, Fully Charged, as well as lots of other shows. And there's one thing in particular that I do not agree with, because I think in some circumstances, microinverters, they are the best. They are the saviour of solar installations. And there are a lot of advantages. And you can point to the safety aspect. You can point to the panel monitoring. Excellent. I completely agree with that as long as people understand that there are some downsides to some of those issues as well um, and the in, the the uh, capability to you know have this kind of modular build that you can just add on solar panels just super easy you know well if you don't worry about scaffolding going up and down and stuff but also you can have elevations of the house that could just have one single solar panel and they don't need complicated optimizers and string inverters and a, a minimum number of panels to operate so i think micro inverters have their place but there's a lot of thing a lot of times where they don't have their place so i just want to do a little desktop comparison compared to uh, Give Energy, Sunsync, Solis, Fox, Grow What, they're all very familiar uh, names if you've looked at any solar stuff. And then we're just going to pick another 440 watt bifacial panel that can go up against the REA just for some specs. So if you don't like a lot of maths, then you can go online and you can get a string voltage calculator tool. So you can plug in which panels, and we've popped those uh, Jinko bifacial panels in there it brings in the wattage the voltage the amperage and it will show you that for varying temperatures that you will have a different string voltage based on different temperatures so you can calculate this all for yourself if you're interested but I've plugged this into a little bit of a spreadsheet to give us a little bit of an example okay so REA say their startup voltage not REA M phase say their startup voltage is 22 volts and that is per panel and it doesn't matter if you've got 22 panels or if you've got one panel it's all exactly the same so by that logic the fewer panels you have in your array, the more the, the startup voltage would be biased towards microinverters. Now let's have a look at some string or hybrid inverters. These inverters over here, I've put my own one in there to start with, Sunsync 8.8. .8. You'll see in a minute why that's in there and why that's important. Uh, Give Energy is also 150 volt startup. Uh, the 
3.6, these are all 3.6 kilowatt inverters here, 125, 120, 120, 75 volts. So one of the claims that Imogen said, and I don't know if this was fed to her by Heatable, I don't know, the hybrid inverter had a 200 volt startup or typically has a 200 volt startup. A, a quick scan, I can't find any home domestic uh, inverters that have a 200 volt startup none of them at all 150 seems to be kind of the maximum upper level um, maybe I'm looking in the wrong places I had a look on like trade sparky in some of these places and I flicked through loads and loads and loads to see if there were any that had a 200 volt startup couldn't find any but um, over here I've got the uh, string voltage if you were to have these jinko panels and if you had one of them in average UK uh, kind of low light startup conditions 32 volts is what you would get from one of those panels apparently um, if you had six panels and you had them all connected in series of course then it would be uh, 191 volts and then on and on and on 255 319 383 447 the reason i've gone yellow after that is most of these inverters will not like playing ball with the strings if they're over 450 volts so you probably have to connect uh, a, a you'd have to connect a certain amount of panels in series to get your voltage as high as you possibly can but then you'd have to connect in parallel so you might have like two banks of six or probably more relevant for 16 panels you'd probably want to have two banks of eight panels so that you would have uh, you would effectively end up with 255 volts but then you'd be doubling the amperage that that goes to the inverter so anyway this is the uh, ratio here and this shows the string to startup ratio so this is just compared to my sunsync 8.8 .8 kilowatt inverter 150 watt startup 191 string voltage and bear in mind in many conditions the voltage can be well up from 191 volts and then you know 10 panels were over 200 percent of the startup voltage of the sunset so I'm questioning and wondering why they always focus on this low startup voltage. Now what I want to show you is my real world information and data from the back end of my inverter. So this is the DC side of the inverter that shows the input that is coming off the roof down to my hybrid inverter. And you can see that it first starts to register 23 watts at 718 in the morning okay so that's in watts let's now have a quick look at the amperage at 718 is showing one of my strings is 0 0.2 the other one is 0 0.1 okay um, the yellow line is my big array my northwest one the blue one is my southeast array let's have a little look at the voltage okay so we're looking at 718 in the morning yeah Let's have a little look at 718. So at 718, you can see where the voltage dips a little bit, where it's kicking in and starting up my inverter, okay? But prior to that, we had much, much higher voltage than is the, what is registered by the Sunsync inverter. So why didn't the Sunsync inverter wake up a lot earlier? If we get to here we've got 100, over 150 volts at 6:45 a.m. so why at 6:45 a.m. are we not registering any watts output well let's have a little look at the amperage there's just nothing there so we can see that there's plenty enough voltage loads of voltage startup voltage isn't an issue the problem is there's still not enough energy in low light situations to produce the required amperage to actually generate any watts. And so we have to wait a whole extra half an hour after the startup voltage is reached to have enough amps to really kick things into gear, okay? Now, I don't want to get really nerdy and get into the complete weeds of it, but it's the same issue for those M-phase microinverters as it is for a string inverter. If we uh, look a little bit further down the line, you can see that once the inverter kind of wakes up and uh, kicks into gear, you can see that for the most part, 
our strings remain pretty consistent voltages throughout the day even though clouds are passing and it's getting shady and it's light and dark and real direct sunlight the voltage doesn't vary the voltage once it's light the you can see as it gets light and then you can see that the voltage for both strings apart from when it turns on and has a little bit of a dip it is pretty much all day perfectly consistent okay i know that my large array it's around about 260 ish volts and my smaller array is around about 190 volts to 200 ish that kind of region and it's the same every single day um, and if you're interested in how my arrays are wired I've got six uh, panels in series on the front of the house and on the rear of the house I've got two sets of eight panels that are both wide in series but then wide in parallel with each other okay now what happens is actually the wattage output just mirrors the amps that are input okay so you can see my two strings here and you can see especially on the southeast ones as the sun comes out and then as the sun goes away, sun comes out, sun goes away, and you can see the ups and downs of it. But that mirrors perfectly into how many watts are output. It's not the voltage that varies with solar panels, or at least very, very little. It's the amperage, the amps that varies. I don't know if this goes to clarify anything or demonstrate anything, and if you think I'm just talking out of my backside, then contribute something in the comments let's have a discussion about this it would be great to kind of crowdsource some information and some data my desire um i would love to see four houses in the same street same orientation with the same roofs with the same number of solar panels on them put 10 solar panels on four houses and have two houses that both have micro inverters two houses that both have string hybrid inverters and then also have two houses that have uh, bifacial panels and two that have standard you know mono facial panels and um that would then really go to show where are the performance gains really because my hunch is that the performance gains are more in the bifacial panels and less in the micro inverters not to take away from some of the other advantages i mean there's some swings and roundabouts but if we're just talking about pure efficiency more panels under a string inverter you're going to perform just as well and i also don't want to get into clipping because if we go back we can see i don't know if i actually clipped it on this bit um peak output yeah so you can see that these are paired with a 440 watt panel i've demonstrated many times that my 430 watt panels they can actually in perfect conditions nice and cool with direct sunlight they can actually get over 500 watts each panel and so anytime you have those perfect conditions admittedly that's not very often in the uk but anytime you do have those conditions you are giving up power using these end phase micro inverters compared to a hybrid string inverter which can just suck all of that juice up so you don't get the clipping you don't have to worry about the peaks and on the very good days you're gonna be uh, making hay while the sun shines thanks for watching if you made it this far you probably want to consider doing something and being in the minority of people who watch my videos because i know that 99 percent aren't subscribed and they won't like the video and they will not leave a comment but thank you for watching and see you on the next video